is Nine News with Georgie Garden. Good evening. We begin with breaking news and very sad news. Just minutes ago, our colleague Peter Harvey passed away after his battle with pancreatic cancer. He was surrounded by his family in hospital. We begin our bulletin tonight with this special tribute. More than one million men are now standing to at battle stations out there. Standoff in the desert is likely to continue for several days. Mr Hawke told Parliament that all the relevant documents in the Mick Young affair were already contained. We all thought Michael our friend's voice would roll on forever. Full. But probably the night's most important reaction is coming from Labour MPs. It seems like it's always been there. A constant, enduring remembrance of things and people. For 37 years with Channel 9 covering big politics, big wars. If Iraq can withstand a week or two of the Allied offensive, there are no reports of damage and no reports of injury. But also the little triumphs of life. Does it matter what side of the road you're driving on? By the way, would somebody please phone home and let them know where I am? And learning along the way how to face his own mortality, fighting pancreatic cancer. But when the lethargy gets very bad, push through it, get up, go to work. And you may still be tired and terribly lethargic, but at least you're doing something. Peter was born a Bondi boy and began his career as a cadet at Sydney's Daily Telegraph. He made the Australian journo's traditional pilgrimage to Fleet Street, where he would be celebrated as British Reporter of the Year. Change in the weather was the last thing anybody forecast. Peter was always drawn to the big story and switched to the American magazine Newsweek covering the war in Vietnam. Never too precious, Peter was always ready to do a spoof of himself. If you've ever wondered what it feels like to be sitting in your living room when the earth starts to move, then this is the place for you. If the past is anything to go by, and it usually is, the future for the Wiggles looks pretty good. Peter Harvey, Nine News. But it was the small detail he searched out and wrote about which made his work so human. Not so long ago, a river raged through here, bank to bank. And I've been occasions there where I've done stuff for a car affair, and Pete's been out doing stuff for news beforehand, of course, and let's say the Anzac Day, we've done a couple of times, and I come around the corner in George Street, um, and there's Pete, and I think, oh, damn. <laughs> you know, I'm up against Harvey, now I've got to lift my game. Back in Australia in 1975, Peter joined our political team in Canberra, in the corridors of power. He was there for all the big things. He was there at the end of 1975 and on November 11, the dismissal, and uh, uh, he became a very familiar face uh, with his very distinctive voice and persona. He could still break away to cover the world. Peter Harvey, National Nine News, Baghdad, in Washington, in Moscow, at Petra, in Jordan. But Canberra was his daily patch, from the Whitlam dismissal through a clutch of other leaders and would-be leaders. Peter Harvey was a fierce competitor when we worked for rival networks and a valued colleague in the 13 years we were together in the Nine Networks Canberra Bureau. One of the things I most admired about him was the way he mentored younger members of the staff. Peter's was a generous spirit. He's a real loss to journalism. Peter Harvey, Canberra. Those words, the most famous sign-off in Australian television. Peter Gravy, Bra. Elevated to almost cult status by radio journalist Mike Carlton. Mike and Peter were rivals on the Canberra Round. The media in those days, we're talking 40 years ago, was a very tiny little fish pond then, and all the fish knew each other. Peter was always a, a larger-than-life personality. He was a big bloke to start with. But he had, uh, he had character and he had presence. Another iconic era for Peter was with the program The Ticks. On the road... Just a short time after the rocket hit on this apartment building in Haifa, that's exactly what the family would have been doing up there, sitting around that table. And playing the postman. Viewers had their thoughts... By the time they reach the age of 40, they're just another bunch of old broads. Being cutesy belongs to the Stone Age, which is where most of them belong. And Peter had his. Australia. For a start, we make a fortune exporting uranium to the world and we continue using grossly polluting coal-burning power stations. What a massive double dose of hypocrisy. If there was one abiding story which struck close to Peter's heart, it is the story of the Anzacs. This is my first time to Gallipoli, but really, I've been seeing this place all my life. 
an episode of Australian history that's been unavoidable right from my earliest days at school. In fact, it was about the one piece of Australian history that was taught at school in my day. I think we learned more about English kings and queens than we did about the things that really mattered. You don't really get a handle on just how small, just how intimate this whole battlefield was until you come to a place like this. This road now runs along what was no man's land. The Turkish trenches were there on this side of the road, the Australian trenches there. You can almost stretch your arms out and touch them. And that's the way they stayed for eight months, shooting and fighting and living, able to talk to each other when they weren't killing each other. He faced his battle with cancer with amazing calm. It's a hard emotion to quantify. I felt far from happy, of course, but not, not unhappy. Not, I, I, I wasn't shocked. I think I'd been expecting that there'd be some sort of problem. Um, basically made us just a question of dealing with it. So, perhaps, no happy ending to Peter Harvey's own story. Unless you count the close family and the many, many friends he made along the way. Mark Burroughs, Nine News.